Within the murky waters of an eastern shore wetland, clouds of translucent jelly glisten in the February sun. The recently laid egg masses of the eastern tiger salamander, a state endangered species. This is a species that's just still hanging on. We basically have two meta populations in Maryland, one in Caroline County and one in Kent County. Scott Smith is a wildlife ecologist with the Department of Natural Resources. Today, he's conducting a tiger salamander population survey. It's cold work, but this is the only time of year that he and his crew can track this elusive amphibian. It's in the mole salamander family, so it spends most of its life underground in small mammal burrows like moles. Emerging during the winter breeding season to mate and to lay eggs in ponds like this one, called Delmarva Bays. Basically, they're a type of seasonal wetland that fills up with water in the winter, and then in most years, by the end of the summer, they dry out. Meaning they're fish free, which is precisely what makes them such an important breeding ground for amphibians like salamanders, frogs, and newts a place where their egg masses will be safe from aquatic predators. In fact, conservation specialist Beth Schlimm attributes the decline of the eastern tiger salamander in Maryland, in part, to the decline of these bays. Unfortunately, at this point, many of them have been filled in or they haven't been managed in any way. Culprits include development, pollution, and a large network of agricultural ditches designed to drain the landscape. Human suppression of wildfires leads to another problem, encroaching trees. The more trees you have in there, the more water is being taken up by those trees and it really dries them out pretty quickly. The sites that are really good for tiger salamanders have what we call a really long hydro period. They're wet for a long period of time. Throughout history, theories about the origins of these ephemeral wetlands have ranged from meteor shower impacts to residual traces of the biblical flood. They say that during the flood, that as the waters receded, whales were left beached up on land, and these are where the whales did their death throes. Earning them the nickname whale wallows. But the true origin dates back 10 to 12,000 years to when much of the Delmarva Peninsula was sand dunes, shaped by wind. We're gonna be walking up an ancient post-Pleistocene dune, and then go down the other side, and the next interdoodle swale is a large pond, which is where we're gonna look for tiger salamanders. Each year, Scott oversees an egg mass count, from which he can estimate population numbers and get a sense of which ponds are the most important for breeding. This winter, he's taking things one step further. This year, we're trying to get a better handle on population, so we're doing some trapping. So far, we haven't been very successful. This is a pipe cleaner trap, and it is empty. Pond after pond, trap after trap, nothing. Until... Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Two tigers yeah. in the last one! <laughs> Tigers in hand, Scott and his crew take down their vitals. I'm gonna weigh them. And then mark them with a polymer that glows under UV light. This is part of a mark recapture study to actually come up with some population estimates. So to do that, you catch animals, you mark them, then you release them, then you catch them again, and you see what proportion of them are marked already. We have been monitoring the endangered eastern tiger salamander population here since the early 1990s. There's a lot of annual variation, but overall we've seen since we really started doing intensive management, we have seen a slow but steady increase in this extremely endangered species. Come summertime, ice and bare branches make way for a riot of greenery. Water levels have dropped and the tiger salamander egg masses have long since hatched. Somewhere beneath the surface, young tigers are preparing to venture onto dry land for the first time. But for several other local amphibians, the breeding season is in full swing. Carpenter frog, hear that? 
a fact that becomes increasingly apparent as day turns to night. When we arrived here, well, it was light out, it was quiet, there was some bird calling, but tonight, it's like a symphony orchestra. This soundtrack comes courtesy of one of the Delmarva Peninsula's most raucous inhabitants, the state-endangered barking tree frog. Early June is peak breeding season, time for these arboreal amphibians to descend from the canopies under the cover of darkness and float tennis ball-like across the surface of the water. Barking in the hopes of attracting a mate. So this is a barking tree frog. It's the largest tree frog in North America. And of course, he's all puffed up. And he just wants to start, he wants to call right here in my hands. And I would like to let it go because it wants to breed and we're keeping it from doing what it does best. Like the eastern tiger salamander, the barking tree frog benefits from intensive management of these important breeding areas, a process which usually takes place in the fall once these seasonal ponds have mostly dried down. We are in a wetland in Kent County and we're here to do some habitat management. I checked on this particular wetland a couple of times. In June, there was still, you know, knee high water. And then when I was out here in early September, the water level had completely dropped. Right now, it's October. The goal of this work is to open up the canopy of these wetlands and remove some tree species that we don't think really belong here. What we're doing is drilling into the tree and then we inject a little bit of herbicide and that tissue will pull that herbicide down to the roots and kill the tree. Removing trees will hopefully help prevent this wetland from drying out too quickly, while also ensuring that enough sunlight hits the water. Having the light kind of penetrate into the water column is really important when you have amphibians that are laying egg masses in the water. It helps with their development. It's a simple solution, but it works. So we've had a handful of ponds in Maryland that did not have tiger salamanders using them, and as soon as we opened up the canopies, tiger salamanders moved in. Within the next few months, rain and snow melt will once again fill shallow basins across the eastern shore, beginning anew the annual cycle of these ancient wetlands. And if all goes according to plan, with each new cycle, the choruses will be a little louder and the egg masses a little more plentiful. <laughs> <laughs>